In this lecture, we'll study the passenger mix flow problem that can be used by airlines to find out how many passengers from each OD market and eventually of different fare classes will fly on their flights. This is a relevant problem for urban spoke carriers to plan their operations while addressing the dichotomy between demand and supply. In fact, although we are not going to address that in our lectures, this passenger mix flow problem is typically coupled with a fleet assignment problem to help airlines to decide which aircraft type, and therefore which capacity, they should allocate to each flight in order to maximize the revenue that they can potentially make with the demand that they estimate. Given that this problem, when applied to real cases with thousands of possible OD markets and hundreds of flights, can be very hard to solve, we are also going to discuss the use of a well-known algorithm called the column generation algorithm. In terms of content, we'll cover once again the MLP models and the multi-commodity flow problems by studying the passenger mix flow problem and solving it with the column generation algorithm. We'll divide our lectures in three parts. We'll start in this video by discussing the passenger mix flow problem and two ways of formulating it. And in the following two videos, we'll start by discovering what is the column generation algorithm about, how it works. And in the third video, we'll see how we can apply it to solve the passenger mix flow problem. Let's start with the definition of the passenger mix flow problem. The goal of this problem is to dis decide what is the best mix of passengers from each OD pair and potentially from uh, different uh, fare classes that the airline will have to transport in each flight in order to maximize the total profit that the airline can make from the demand. This is a tactical problem that can help with the allocation of capacity to the flights and give some insights to the revenue management strategy of the airline. By smart spilling the passengers that give the airline a low revenue to the network or that can be reaccommodated in alternative itineraries, the airline can maximize the potential revenue generated with the capacity provided. So it is assumed that for some passengers it is possible to reaccommodate them on a, on a different uh, itinerary, different than the one that they would prefer. That is, we can reaccommodate passengers from one itinerary to another itinerary. A passenger itinerary is composed by one or multiple flights that take the passengers from their origin to their destination. We'll use this problem to help us to understand the column generation algorithm. But this is also an interesting problem to follow because we can use our knowledge on the multi-commodity flow problem. The problem was first presented by Glover et al. in 1982 and it was further developed by colleagues at MIT. The problem is commonly associated with the respective fleet allocation problem as it is uh, discussed in the paper from Cynthia Barnett. To define the problem, let's consider the following notation. Passengers between each OD pair are associated with an itinerary composed by a set of flights. We define the set of itineraries pre present in our demand with a capital P. These itineraries can be seen as paths in our multi-commodity flow problem. For each itinerary P, small uh, caps P, there could be one or more alternative itineraries that we consider to recapture passengers spilled from their respective itinerary. These are the sets PP. Our decision variables define the number of passengers of each itinerary P flying in a given itinerary R, either being their preferred itinerary P or any other itinerary to which it is possible to recover passengers from P. There is a recapture rate, BPR, associated with the percentage of passengers from an itinerary P that will be willing to be reaccommodated in an itinerary R. Each itinerary is also associated with an unconstrained demand and an average fare, while each flight in the itinerary has a fixed capacity pre-allocated uh, before we solve the passenger mix flow problem. The standard formulation of our problem is presented here. We want to maximize the revenue generated by the allocation of passengers to the itineraries, 
that is the objective function uh, that we do have in this slide, while respecting the capacity per flight uh, in our network and by guaranteeing that we are not transporting more people than the unconstrained demand available. The latter is provided in this expression 3, and be aware that this assumes that the recaption rate BPR for the case P being equal to R, so the BPP, that is the passengers that are allocated to their uh, preferred itineraries, this rate is equal to 1. That is, we assume that all passengers will travel in their preferred itinerary if there is capacity made available to them. We assume that the decision variables are continuous for the sake of simplicity. The problem will be more complex if we would impose the decision variables to be integer. If we analyze this model, we see that we'll have as many constraints as the number of flights, this comes from constraints 2, and the number of itineraries, this comes from constraints 3. In terms of decision variables, we'll have the matrix XPR being a squared matrix with as many elements as the square of the number of the itineraries. This is the side of this uh, model. Okay, but can we formulate this problem in a different way? Let's say perhaps in a clever way. Let's consider the following observation. Most of the passengers traveling in our network, they will most likely travel in their desired itinerary. That being true, why not to focus only on the few ones that are reaccommodated in other itineraries? This concept gave origin to the key path formulation in which we call the preferred itinerary the key path. How will we deal with the passengers not allocated to their key path? Well, these passengers will be by default spilled and allocated to a fictitious itinerary uh, which will mean that all these passengers allocated to this uh, itinerary will be lost, so not transport at all and no revenue generated from them. With our optimization model, then what we'll try to do is to reallocate uh, these passengers into alternative itineraries in our schedule if spare capacity exists. And that's the problem that we'll try to solve. But to solve this problem, we have to slightly readapt our notation. First, we will pre-compute the unconstrained demand for each flight in our network, equivalent to the flow that we would have allocated to each flight if there wouldn't be any seat capacity. Second, we have to adapt our decision variables to now only consider the passengers that have to be reaccommodated. That is, the ones that are transported in their key path will not be included in this model. So eventually, if we sum up the all values of TPR, our decision variables, for a given path uh, or a given itinerary P, the sum can be lower than the total demand associated with that itinerary P because some passengers will be flying in their key path and they are not captured in our decision variables. These are just simple transformations of our previous decision variables XPR, as you can see in the slide. So let's see how we can formulate this new version of the model. The objective function has to be now the minimization of the loss of fare of the passengers that we are spilling or reaccommodating. That is, if we reaccommodate a passenger from itinerary P to itinerary R, we have a loss equal to the fare of the key path P minus the fare of the alternative path R. And we have to multiply this fare from itinerary R by the respective recapture rate because eventually not all passengers will be available to be recaptured. In the case that we really spill passengers, meaning that we are allocating them to the fictitious itinerary, then the fare of R, the fare of the fictitious itinerary, is zero. And that means that we will lose the full fare of the key path P. In terms of constraints, let's first look into equation 7. These are simple constraints that limit the number of passengers to be spilled and recaptured to be lower than the demand in the respective itinerary. For most cases and most itineraries, these constraints are irrelevant, so they don't have to be considered. 
I'll leave up to you to see why this is the case. Let's move to constraint 6. These constraints are less trivial to understand, so let's spend some more time analyzing them. These are the capacity constraints, linking the flow with the capacity on each flight. But now it is more complicated than it was in the standard formulation, because we are moving passengers from one itinerary to the other, while not considering those ones that are following their key path. So starting from the right hand side of our equation, we estimate what is the need for spillage in a given flight. This right hand side can be pre-computed and give us the indication of what needs to happen in each specific flight. So if the difference between the unconstrained demand and the capacity is positive, we'll have to remove passengers from the pads that include flight I. On the other hand, if the difference is negative, it means that we do have room in that flight to accommodate passengers that come from other itineraries than not the ones that use uh, flight I. Of course, there could be the situation that the difference is null. In that case, we do have a balance between demand and capacity. Our decisions refl are reflected in the left hand side of our equation. The first term uh, refers to the number of passengers that will be removed from the multiple itineraries using flight I, while the second term uh, represents the number of passengers that we will eventually recapture from other itineraries to itineraries using the flight uh, I. So the left hand side gives us the difference between the passengers that we remove and the ones that we recapture in each flight I. If we have to spill passengers, this left hand side has to be positive, meaning that we'll have to remove more passengers than the ones that we uh, will recapture in this uh, flight. On the other hand, if we have a surplus of capacity or a negative spillage uh, value, the left hand side can assume negative values, meaning that we can recapture more passengers on our flight I than the ones that we will eventually remove. Ok, so let's go back to our full formulation. If we analyze our new model, this key path formulation, this formulation has exactly the same size as the standard formulation that we discussed before. So does this mean that we have work on a new formulation for nothing? Maybe not. Maybe there is a reason to uh, prefer this uh, specific uh, formulation. So let's meet again in the next video to see how this formulation can be helpful. Before you open the video, try to think for yourself about the reasons to prefer this key path formulation. I'll see you in the next video.